in this fishing historic places remembrance moment we're going back to southern new england 1675 where king philip's war had shifted from the east out to the connecticut river valley and we're going to the sleepy little community of deerfield mass where an expedition sent to harvest corn would run into some trouble trouble that can be seen when you look at a map and notice Bloody Brook. Yes, toponyms matter. So I hope you enjoy this remembrance moment. So here in front of this colonial era home, under the shadow of Mount Patcomtuck, is the oldest war memorial in the United States. It's Connecticut Valley Brownstone, and it holds beneath it the bones of 72 men and boys killed by the native people. A testimonial to Muttawump's greatness as a warrior. This is like Muttawump's second great stroke. His first was the destruction of Brookfield. Although he didn't defeat the heirs garrison, he made their life quite miserable for a couple of days. But here in Deerfield, at Bloody Brook, Muttawump will destroy an entire train van. Now the monument is located here. If you look, we can see where the old cart path would have traveled south. And if I turn and we bring it back, we can see that it's also, you know, we're maybe 150 yards away from the site of the attack. The position of the monument suggests that, of course, this is where the bodies were interred by Captain Mosley when he drove Muttawump's forces back an hour after the massacre. The position of the grave, or monument, indicates that the bodies were spread from the brook down maybe another 150 yards because the monument is placed on a mass grave that was created by Captain Mosley when his train band came out of Northampton in relief of the forces of Lathrop. They were a little tardy and he wanted to find out what was going on. Of course, Northampton had already had problems with their own native people, the Nanatuck. They tried to disarm them and take their children as hostage. And that led the Nanatuck into King Philip's arms. And it's probable that the Nanatuck were here at Bloody Brook in September. Nanatuck, Nipmuc, Quaybog, Minimesset, Puckhumtuck, and probably a dozen other tribes whose names we don't remember gathered here and fought a great battle, winning a great victory for the native people. Behind me, is an obelisk that was set in 1838. It was a huge event for the people of Western Massachusetts because one of the great speakers in America's 19th century was on hand to give the, uh, whatever you call it. What do you call it when somebody gives a speech? They call that a uh, commemoration, I guess. And that would be Edward Everett, who you might remember as having preceded Lincoln and speak for two hours, more than two hours, at Gettysburg in November of 1863. Everett spoke, who knows for how long, here at Bloody Brook when this monument was established. He had been a governor, senator, congressman from Massachusetts. He was a very, very well-known figure at a time when Americans loved rhetoric. And we can see on this ground, Captain Thomas Lathrop and 84 men under his command, including 18 teamsters from Deerfield, conveying stores from the town to Hadley, were ambushed by about 700 Indians. And the captain of 76 men were slain, September 18, 1675, old style. I think that translates into September 23rd, new style. The soldiers who fell were described by contemporary historians as a choice company of young men. The very flower of the county of Essex, none of whom were ashamed to speak with the enemy in the gate. The same of the slain is marked by a stone slab 21 rods southerly 
of this monument because that's where they're buried. And that's what we're looking at. The monument behind me, 19th century monument, elevating it, you know, a simple slab of Connecticut Valley brownstone, that's not enough. We need something more majestic with that white obelisk pointing skyward, commemorating the loss of so many of the colony's young men. I'm standing on Old Route 5 in South Deerfield, Massachusetts as cars roll by on a Saturday night trying to reconstruct for you a battle that took place 350 years ago when Thomas Lathrop and a trained band of about 85 men and boys coming from Northampton, Hadley, Hatfield, and even as far away as Springfield had been sent north to harvest the corn abandoned in Deerfield when the Pocumtuck rose to join King Philip's War on the side of Medicom in the midsummer of 1675. They were bringing that corn back to Northampton where a long winter awaited the settlers. Maybe the people of the valley would need the corn, maybe not. Maybe they'd sell it to the eastern settlements who certainly would need it with the Wampanoag and other tribes in the region inflamed against the English. Down that road came half a dozen wagons with 80 some odd men and boys. When Lathrop and his band got to the brook behind me, Muddy Brook, he found that trees which had been standing as his column went to Deerfield that morning were now felled across the road. He sent out flankers, scouts, looking for any sign of who might have done it. I mean, you and I could expect that it would be the Pocumtuck people who live right here. But there was no evidence that there were, was anyone around. So he and his band began to clear the trees from the wagon trail. Now, while they were doing that, some of the boys looked up behind me into the trees overhead and found beautiful bunches of grapes that were exposed when the trees had been felled. Nature's candy. And these young men quickly began climbing the trees, throwing bunches of grapes down so that the workers clearing the trees would have some fine munches. As they were doing this, from up above, behind me, on Mount Pocumtuck, which you can see beyond the houses. Mudawump, the leader of the Nipmuc, a menacing warrior of great ability who had recently attacked and destroyed the town of Brookfield. Mudawump was watching. And within a short time, 700 native people, Nanatuck, Pacumtuck, Quavon, Minimesic, Quinsigaman, came out of the woods surrounding Lathrop's trained band. I'm sure the young people up in the trees behind me had quite a fright. And, uh, you know, they should have. Within just a few minutes, 72 of Lathrop's men were dead in one of the greatest massacres or victories, depending on your perspective that would occur in the history of the Massachusetts Bay Plymouth Colony. Lathrop had known Mudawamp for years. They'd been neighbors, and they'd not always gotten along. And when the news that the Menemeset had risen, Lathrop had basically said that he would, if he had the chance, kill him. And that wouldn't be very difficult, according to Lathrop. According to legend, Mudawamp came out of the head of 700 of his confederates and told Lathrop that before the sun set, he was his heart. Now we don't know if that actually happened, but we do know that before the sun set, Lathrop and 72 men and boys had fallen here at what became known as the Battle of Bloody Brook. Another great victory by the war chief Mudawamp, who is 
one of the truly great leaders of King Philip's War. What we do know is that the bodies were strewn from where I stand down the road and the massacre would have continued had not another train band from Northampton, led by Captain Mosley, arrived in time, having heard the gunshot, and put a stop to the massacre, basically, by just showing up, because Mother Wump had had enough. He didn't want an actual fight with a English trained man. He had what he needed, a victory to bring back to his people. And Mosley was left with the bodies to bury. And they had been laid several rods, well, about 100 yards south of where I am now. 